Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the SM Cast. If you guys are unaware of what the SM Cast is, it is a weekly podcast that we do here on either the YouTube channel or on the Anchor page. It depends on which way you're watching. You can also listen to it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and a bunch of other areas. So please let me know if you're watching watching this on YouTube or listening to this through any of those other ways. Now, today's episode, we are going to be talking about my three favorite movies. Now, this kind of is a is a podcast. That's, this episode is kind of like more personal, but I'm going to be explaining by why my three movies are probably the best movies ever in their genre. Now, uh, if you guys want to know more about my favorite movies, then just keep listening. Let me know your favorite movies, uh, top three, and then we'll we'll go from there because you know I'd like to start a good discussion with all of you. Anywho, uh, this week. Uh, I'm just going to talk about myself for a little bit. Um, I had school uh, in Avid. We had our first binder check, and uh, I thought we were supposed to do 15 pages of Cornell Notes. If you guys are unaware what Cornell Notes is, it's a type of note-taking that's very annoying that you have to basically spend like a good 30 minutes on one page of notes, just taking it and then questioning it and then summarizing it and then annotating it and everything. I thought we had to do 15, so I did 15. We only needed to do 12, and that was very annoying. And there was also a project in Avid that I was supposed to do, and I thought it was due Friday, and it is due on Wednesday of the next week. So, luckily, uh, I'm probably working on the project right now as the episode comes out, so that's pretty hype. And uh, I met some new people this week. Uh, a new kid came into my into my AP Lang class uh, earlier in the week and they were pretty nice i think it was last week actually uh they're they're pretty nice they they switched out but um they're they're pretty cool and i hope to continue a friendship with them it sounds like uh like they're good people so who knows i'll probably keep you guys updated on that and i didn't tell them that i had a youtube channel yet so i don't know how that's i don't know that conversation is gonna go but uh it's kind of funny because it's it's funny because people ask me a lot like oh what do you do in your spare time like what is your do you have a hobby or anything and i'm not embarrassed of my youtube channel but it's like it's really hard to segue that into a oh yeah i have a youtube channel by the way you know just it's really hard to do that and uh you know it's just that's one of the many difficulties of being a youtuber <laughs> and uh anyway you know so that was basically my week in a nutshell. Let me know what your week was if you have not uh, had a good week or if you have had a good week. Like I said in the in the previous episode, well, actually, no, I didn't. I had some family emergencies last weekend. That's why I didn't stream, but it's okay. And so, um, my three favorite movies. And these movies I have loved since I was like eight. And two of those movies I probably shouldn't have seen when I was eight, but still. So my top three favorite movies are number three is probably Rush Hour. If you guys don't know what Rush Hour is, it is an action-adventure movie uh, starring Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan. Uh, it's basically a, it's basically a buddy cop movie, but uh, they're hunting down the Chinese triad, and uh, it's really funny. I'm not going to spoil any details of it as of right now. I will let you guys know if I do get into spoilers, but it's... Uh, it's actually a really funny movie. Chris Tucker's in it, and he's always really funny. He hasn't done all too much lately, but uh, I highly consider watching it. Uh, I think it came out in 1995, I want to say, but I'm not entirely sure on the year. It might have been later. Uh, number two, Spider-Man 2, starring Tobey Maguire. And uh, this is a lot of people's favorite movie. It's my favorite superhero movie of all time, and just... Mostly for nostalgia reasons, but it is a very good movie, and I highly suggest watching it. Like I said, I'm not going to go into spoilers yet, but uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good watch. And number one is a goofy movie. A goofy movie is just, it is the best movie of all time. It's just, it's so amazing. And while I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's the best movie of all time, even though I just said that, it is clearly my favorite. And it's, it's just, it's so good in every way. The soundtrack is amazing. Unfortunately, uh, I have Google Music Unlimited and you get like unlimited songs. There are two songs 
on the A Goofy Movie album that I just cannot get for whatever reason. And it's it's just so dumb and it makes me so sad. They're stand out in Eye to Eye, both of which are by a man named Tevin Campbell. So possibly I can just search him up and get them off the soundtrack. But who knows? Uh, I still haven't looked at that, but I'll pro- I just thought about that now. So I'll probably do that. And, uh, it's just, it's such a good movie. It is a, it is also like an adventure movie, kinda, but it's, it's actually like, it's a, it's a father-son movie, you know, in in the sense of like, it teaches you, it teaches kids that like family's important, like, oh, always stick with your family, you know, your family's always there, they got you, and, uh, this was, that was my childhood movie. I first saw that movie when I was like four years old, and I loved it ever since, um, I used to not like it, in, only because the first two minutes of the movie are the scariest thing I have ever seen. When I watch this movie today, I am 16. It's been easily 12 to 13 years since I first saw this movie. Whenever I watch I watch it every few months. I don't watch it like that often. It's one of those movies where it's, where it's like, I love it, but I can only watch it so many times a year. Just because it is that special. So... It's, um, it's, it, you know, it's, it's one of those movies. It's not like Rush Hour, I can watch as many times as I want. Spider-Man 2, I can watch as many times as I want because they don't get old. And a goofy movie doesn't get old, but it has such a sentimental value to me that I feel like I would ruin it if I saw it as often as possible. So I see it maybe like two, th- two, three times a year-ish, maybe. I haven't, I've only seen it once this year, so I'm already a little behind, but, um, even now, I still skip the first two minutes because they are the scariest bit put onto a put onto a movie in played in a movie theater ever. It too has nothing on the first two minutes of a goofy movie. And if you guys have seen the movie, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Cause just um, you know, you know what a goofy movie is about. You know, actually, I'm very surprised at how many people nowadays know what a goofy movie even is. Cause I've talked about it at school before, expecting like people would say, "Oh, that's that's a movie. Oh, okay, that's pretty neat." But a lot of people know it, and it's weird because it's like if you talk about it, a lot of people are gonna know. But it's one of those movies that not too many people talk about. It's one of those movies that it's like it has such a niche medium where. You can't really talk about it all too much because it's kind of a coin flip on who's seen it, but a lot of people have seen it. It didn't, it did okay at the box office as far as I know, but it's a, it's just, it's a, it's a cult medium right there. It's, it's a, it, it, it's a cult classic. That's what it is. And just, I love it. And it's just, it's always because of the nostalgia. It's not, I can say right here, apart from the soundtrack, it's not even that good of a movie. Um, it's not bad, but apart from the soundtrack, which is probably the best soundtrack ever put to music, ever put in a movie ever, it's it's just okay as a movie. But just the nostalgia for me is just so huge that I'm not going to replace it. Now, How a Grinch Stole Christmas by Jim Carrey almost took number three. It's like number four. It's weird because it's like those movies are like my childhood movies. Uh, I chose Rush Hour because as I'm getting older, I for if I was given the option, it's like, oh, I can only see The Grinch during Christmas time. But Rush Hour, I can see all year long if I wanted to. So, you know, it's kind of like that. And I chose the first Rush Hour over the second one just because uh, like the second one's good. But it's not like Spider-Man 2, where the second one stands entirely on its own. You kind of have... You see the first one, and then see the second one. Where with Spider-Man, I can just see the second one, and that's it. I do always see the first one, but if I wanted to, I could just see Spider-Man 2 and call it a day. And it's... It's just... Wow. So we're going to go about this in order. Okay, so first, Rush Hour. Now now we're going to get into a little bit of spoiler stuff, okay? So Chris Tucker is an LAPD police officer, okay? And Jackie Chan is a uh, chief inspector of something in China. I think he's in Hong, he's in Hong Kong, but I, I don't remember, like, what exactly he is. He's, I don't know if he's, like, just a cop, because they call him uh, chief inspector, but I don't know what that means. <laughs> and 
Uh, I probably should know what that means. Uh, it should be pretty obvious to what that means, but it's like, is he a detective? Is he just a cop? Like, they call him Chief Inspector, and he, and he does a lot of leading. So, maybe? But, I don't know. And, um, oh, uh, Chris Tucker is also, uh, a detective. And Chris Tucker's character, his name is James Carter, and, and, um... Jackie Chan's character is named Lee. I don't remember what his first name is, but they just call him Chief Inspector Lee. And uh, it's cool. So Lee and Carter, you know, they're from entirely different parts of the world, right? And so this is basically how the premise is set up. This is not this is kind of spoilery, but no. Uh, Carter, he doesn't like hanging out with people. You know, he doesn't like having a partner because he likes to roll on his own. He thinks he's all that, and he thinks he can just do whatever he wants because, you know, that's what he wants. And... I've, I get that. I feel that. But uh, other people don't like him. Uh, other people think that he's just a bully. Other people think that he's just uh, not cool. And uh, it is it is kind of frustrating for him, but it's fine. He still thinks he thinks he's all that. And uh, and Lee is a hardcore cop, you know, from from China and the ambassador, the Chinese ambassador, comes to America. You know, he moves to America from Hong Kong because apparently, I didn't even know this, uh, in, uh, at some point, Britain owned Hong Kong, and then they're like, oh, at the beginning of the movie, they're like, oh, you know, Britain doesn't own Hong Kong anymore. Cheers. And, uh, you know, so it's the British guy, and he's talking, and, and uh, the ambassador, his name is Consul Han, He's moving to America with his daughter, whose name is Su Yang. And uh, Su Yang is like eight or nine, I think. Uh, I don't think they ever say her age, but I think she's like somewhere in between like eight and ten. And so she goes to, she goes to American school. I'm actually shocked that she goes to public school because if you're a politician, the last thing you want is to have your kids in a public school because public schools are kind of dangerous. Even in the nineties, they were pretty dangerous. So, uh, they, they go through that and, uh, the Suyang gets kidnapped by, uh, the Chinese triad, right? And, and it's led by this dude whose name is Jun Tao, right? And he's a Chinese man with, uh, white, gr- yellowish hair. It's, it's weird. He's like, he has like a buzz cut. But it's yellow. It's it's weird. It's it's kind of like a mix of yellow and white. It looks like uh like eggshell maybe or something. I'm not entirely sure. But everyone thinks like, oh, you know, he got him, right? So they go looking for him. Basically, the movie is just Carter is assigned to babysit Lee because Consul Han was like, hey, I want one of my men on this. So Lee comes and then Carter is supposed to just babysit him. But they end up going through and finding the whole case and then they solve it because, duh, it's a kid's movie. It's actually not a kid's movie. They say, they, um, if you don't like cursing or shooting or, uh, the N-word used in, in movies, then, uh, probably not for you but if you like all of that stuff which to an extent i like all of that stuff i definitely like the first one and uh, the second one i'm okay with so you know so uh this movie is like for me because it's funny it's a comedy that doesn't take itself too seriously but still has fun with what it does it has fun with its premise and that's probably the most important thing about it it's just the premise is the premise is just okay but the way they turn it through makes it really good. I forget who it's directed by, but uh, whoever whoever it is, they did a pretty good job, I think. So, uh, Rush Hour, uh, as a nostalgia movie for me, 10 out of 10. But as a movie, I would say 7 out of 10. Because there are parts where, it, where it's a little bit weak, but uh, overall it is funny. And they do have a big uh, ERJB, as you can say. Um, if you guys have seen Cosmonaut Variety Hour, then you would know that. It's like a villain that's like, wow, that's dumb. But, uh, yeah, so basically that's, that's probably the only problem with it. And it's not even that big of a deal. Cause the, the villain is like not even too big of a deal. Anywho, let's move on to the second one, Spider-Man 2. Now, Spider-Man 2 stars Tobey Maguire. If you guys saw the first Spider-Man, you saw how he got his power. So now, at the opening of Spider-Man 2, he's poor. 
but he's still Spider-Man. <laughs> and, and it's funny because just this, it's typical. If you get out of college or not college, if you get out of high school and you're going into college, you know, and your family's already poor. And if you're Spider-Man on top of all that, you're going to be poor. So it's going to be funny. He lives on his own. He lives in, in an apartment complex where the one guy's like, give me rent, give me rent, you know? And, um, so yeah, it's, it's like that. And he's like, he does, he does want to be with Mary Jane, but he doesn't want to be with Mary Jane. Like he loves Mary Jane, but he knows like, ugh, Spider-Man, Mary Jane, Spider-Man, Mary, Jane. you know, it's kind of like he has to pick one or the other and he goes with Spider-Man because that one helps more people in the long run. And that's very honorable because you know what? That's kind of a choice that a lot of people have to make. Not Spider-Man, Mary Jane, but kind of like replacing that. Like, should, do I work to provide for my family or am I there? for my family you know it, it's odd because it's like it's one of those juggles that you ha- just have to make in life maybe not that specifically but it's i can do this thing and help me or i can do this thing and help other people and it's great because this movie teaches humility in a sense it teaches like honorability because he chooses to do both things because spoilers halfway through the movie actually in the first in the first like 30 minutes or so he starts losing his powers you know you think like oh you know maybe he's just like feeling sick or something but oh no his powers are entirely gone he's not spider-man right and when when his powers are dying he thinks maybe this is a sign maybe i should just stop being spider-man because it's destroyed peter parker being spider-man has destroyed peter parker and honestly that's a that's something that a lot of people would think a lot of people would think like wow doing this for other people has destroyed this for me so what if i just did the thing for me because those other people are not my concern and he he does he he does leave spider-man behind for a good like one third of the movie there is a lot of the movie where he is just not spider-man i think it's like 30 minutes of an hour and a half long movie well, actually, it might be almost, it's, I think it's almost two hours, but it might be over two hours, but I don't know. But still, like 30 to 40 minutes, that's a third of the movie where he is not Spider-Man. And it's, it's powerful because it shows that, like, Peter Parker alone can carry a movie. It shows that just the mere idea that the, the impossible choice is just able to carry the movie. And I didn't see that as a kid all too well, but nowadays I do. Because it's something that, although I don't have to struggle with currently, I know in the future I'm going to have to struggle with. Because that's something that everyone does when they're growing up. It's something that everyone does when they get out of high school and go into the real world. Do I help myself or do I help the other people? And it's it's a choice that's kind of impossible because one way or the other, someone's getting hurt. Whether it's other people who you don't know or it's you. And unfortunately, a lot of people just don't know how to make that decision. And it's uh, it's pretty cool that this movie kind of like symbolizes both because he does go back to being Spider-Man because that's what makes him feel important. Because obviously, if you're a superhero, you're gonna stay with the superhero life because like that's what makes you imp- feel important because you're like, hee hee hee. And uh, it's pretty neat to, that he just is able to do that. So as my nostalgia movie... 10 out of 10 as a movie 9 out of 10 this movie is just it's really good and half of it isn't even spider-man so the third and final movie number one my favorite movie of all time is a goofy movie uh starring the guy who voices goofy (laughs) i don't know what his i don't know what his name is i think it's like aaron lol or something i don't know just look him up i guess and it's so good it's not even that great, but it's so good. It's it's a movie about learning to trust. It's a movie about learning how to feel for others, compa- feel compassion towards others. And the main premise of the movie, right, is that Max, Goofy's son, right, he's like 14 or something because he's in high school and he's struggling with girl problems, you know, as all 14 year olds are, you know, stuff is going around in there. You have no idea what's there, what's not. Then you start feeling things and you're like, uh oh. 
And so he wants to impress her, and he does a stunt during a an assembly. He gets caught, obviously, and his dad, Goofy, starts thinking, like, wow, what if my son's a delinquent? Because, you know, you guys know who Pete is, right? Pete is just, he's the bad boy cat, you know. He's a cat, but he don't look like no damn cat. He's huge, he and he's fat, and he's got a son of his own, too. I forget what the son's name is, because it's not that, that important. No one cares. But... Uh, still, just, he's, uh, he starts telling Goofy, like, oh, that son of yours is a delinquent, Goof, da Goof, and so Goofy starts getting scared, as all parents do. All parents get scared for their children's safety. He gets scared that his son will go to the electric chair, which I don't even know if they use the electric chair anymore, like, that. that's just kind of like, wow, man, that's cruel, and then... Uh, so he goes on a road, they go on a road trip because Goofy wants to bond and Max doesn't want to be there and Max lies and says like, oh, I'm leaving because I'm going to the Powerline concert. Powerline is their version of Michael Jackson or something because everyone loves Powerline for whatever reason. And then, so it's just a bunch of silly antics, but eventually Goofy and Max come to an understanding. They say like, you know what? Uh, Goofy decides, like, hey, I'll give you your a little bit more space because I realize that you are growing older. And Max says, yeah, I'm growing older, but I'm still your son. You're still my dad. I love you. And uh, it's really sweet. It's really sentimental. And they do end up going to the Powerline concert, and they do end up dancing with him. And uh, Powerline's super cool, uh, and his voice is just amazing. If you guys haven't heard the song Stand Out or Eye to Eye, uh, Go hear those, go listen to those songs. They're just, they're great songs. Uh, top tier songs, I must say. And it's just, it's, uh, it's really great that they're able to, uh, to, to make those songs for a movie that wasn't even too important to Disney. Cause like, yeah, Goofy is important, but he's no Mickey Mouse. And unfortunately, that's just true. I've always liked Goofy, um, but he's not as important as Mickey Mouse. So they never really gave him the spotlight until this movie. And, uh, unfortunately they, they only did the sequel, an extremely goofy movie, and then they just kind of dropped it. It would have been, it, it'd be pretty cool to see a remake of a goofy movie. I don't really know how they could remake it. They can't really do it live action because the scariest thing in the world would be seeing a live action goofy. That's just, ah, that's so creepy. Imagine the style of the Lion King 2019, but with goofy. That, that's just, that's scary. You know, it's just, ah, wild animal. And, um, yeah, so, yeah, I don't want to think about that for too long. But, um, it's just, it's a really sweet movie. So, again, nostalgia movie, 10 out of 10. Uh, as a movie, 7 out of 10. But, uh, go watch it. It's, it's actually really good. So, uh, that was, that was my list of the top, of my top three favorite movies. I tried my best to make sure they were from different genres, and they are. Um, it's just, I don't know. I just kind of had the idea for, like, hey, why don't I just talk about my favorite movies for uh, for this week? Um, don't worry. Next week, I'll get back into doing some of uh, the how-tos kind of stuff. You know, I'll, don't worry. I'll talk about uh, your problems and how to solve your problems, because y'all are a mess. So, uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of the SM Cast. I will see you guys next week, and uh, yeah, that's been about it. I am your host, SM22, and this has been the SMCast.